it is reported that a major Swiss watch brand, a notable Swiss watch brand, is now up for sale, as well as the company that produces their movements. And it is very important to note that this watch movement manufacturer supplies movements to some of the most notable watch brands today that you know and love, including Audemars Piguet and Richard Mille. Now, before we do that, guys, I do want to share with you that this is a based on a news story that I saw, link in the description below, by a Miss Tweed, an independent uh, journal that talks about the luxury industry and watches in general, and they seem to be incredibly well-connected and somewhat of an insider in the uh, the Swiss watch industry over in Switzerland. So I do have to give this disclaimer that this is uh, at this point, just being reported. And in the coming weeks, and I'm sure months, we'll be hearing a lot more about this and also what it means for watch collectors of these watch brands. And also, before we do that, uh, guys, if you haven't found already on my Instagram, The Real John P, I talk about other topics such as business, entrepreneurships, and lessons I've learned along the way building Delray Watch. A um, you know a high-end luxury watch company online where you know we buy, sell, and trade watches, uh, as well as so many other things I've done, including in technology uh, that maybe you haven't been uh, aware of. If you know me from this particular watch channel, uh, things like investing in startups, working with startups, uh, and so many other things around that. So if this is something that you're interested in, please leave in the comments below. It'll help me kind of gauge uh, if this is a direction you know maybe I should be taking some some of my content for you in the future, uh, perhaps on a different channel. So the news, what's happening? It is reported on Miss Tweed's website that Parmigiani Fleurier, as well as the Vaucher watch movement manufacturer and microbrand creator, uh, is going to be put up for sale by the Sandoz Family Foundation. Yes, this may be a household name. They are uh, you know, a very notable family that started uh, essentially, there are gains from early 1800s uh, pharmaceutical uh, trading, essentially. Now they own different stocks and companies, and it's more of a, an investment firm based out of Switzerland where they do invest in pharmaceuticals and also have a very notable position in the watch industry, including Parmigiani Fleurier, uh, as well as the Vaucher watch movement manufacturer. Now, it's also important to note that Hermes owns about 25% stake at the last uh, report that I've seen of the watch manufacturer as well. And that's why you see the movements being put into a lot of their watches as well as other watches for brands that they are associated with. Now, this is a big deal. This is a big deal because I'll tell you why. Many watch brands out there, they don't produce their own movements, right? Many people say, oh, all of Audemars Piguet movements are in-house, right? That in-house means a little bit something different depending who's telling you and who's asking. For example, the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak 37 uses a Vaucher or Vaucher-based movement. The AP 5900 used in the Royal Oak 37 is Vaucher-based, as well as Richard Mille, right, the acclaimed Everybody Wants It brand on the wrists of celebrities and the like. They also have been known to use Vaucher-based movements, and they're not alone. Across the board, including in Parmigiani Fleurier's own watches, they're using Vaucher movements. Many watch microbrands as well have been known to use them because it gives them a higher quality, higher fit and finish than something they would find, you know, maybe off the shelf from, you know, an Etta or a Salita. Here, they'll actually work with you and they'll produce the movements. So this is something that's been very common in watches for pretty much ever, as well as certainly become more popular of a trend as watches have become more popular and more brands have kind of specialized in the marketing, right? A lot of value today in watches comes from marketing. So this is big news, if true, once again, reported, but if true, this is pretty major because it could go a couple of different ways, right? Here's what this could mean for collectors. If perhaps someone wants to engage in competition, right? A company, a watch brand, they want to buy the watch manufacturer, they could potentially buy Vaucher movement manufacturer and start withholding the, the movements or the components from their competitors, right? If Rolex starts noticing, hey, more people seem to be kind of favoring Audemars Piguet, 
they could pop in, they could potentially buy Vauche Movement Manufacturer, and they could start, oh, look at that, supplies going down, guys. What is that doing to your um, to your ability to sell Royal Oak 37s? You better find a new movement. Um, if there's a watch brand that thinks, you know, maybe Richard Mille is a little too uh, hot on their heels right now, maybe they pop in there and they start pulling back. This could happen, and this could mean bad things for brands. And I see in the watch industry right now, brands are starting to really buckle up and get more competitive. And it's perfectly exemplified in the fact that reportedly, of course, Parmigiani Fleurier, the brand itself, has been put up for sale. Now, in just a second, I'll share with you what I think happened to Parmigiani Fleurier. And it's kind of unfortunate because I myself have owned some of their watches. I think they're phenomenal. The fit, the finish, awesome. On par with Audemars Piguet. But go figure, they use some of the same components and manufacturers, right? Including the movements in some of their watches. I'll digress on that for a, for a second. But when we start talking about these brands, I think we could see potentially Hermes not really having a great movement to put in some of their, their watches. And how can they command a, such a high price if they no longer have the access to a discount on those movements, right? Hermes, think fashion brand, but they do make some pretty good watch watches in general. And when we talk about, of course, AP and Richard Mill, there's potential for that to come back. Now, I could easily see AP or Richard Mill perhaps placing a bid, if this is true, and buying the watch, the watch movement manufacturer Vauche and doing what they do with Parmigiani Fleurier. Maybe they make it better. Maybe they don't. Set that aside for now. They could actually really integrate the movement manufacturer with their company. And I think both of these companies are probably in a really great position, at least from a branding standpoint, and a um, the amount of strength they have as brands in the market and notability to probably be able to do it regardless of how well they're doing financially uh, currently compared to their peak. Now, this is interesting, and I really do want to see how this pans out if it is true. And I think it could just be a very interesting time in watches that we see things maybe get a little cutthroat, right? Maybe take us back to the time when Swatch bought the Eta Movement manufacturer, or at least started withholding the supply, and then the Swiss government kind of had to get involved. And that's something the Swiss government doesn't play around with. The Swiss watch manufacturer, the watch industry in general, is something the country takes pride in. The laws, rules, and regulations have always kind of allowed them to play fair, or at least they've stepped in to enable a more fair marketplace after a period of time when and where needed. So I'm excited to see where this goes, and I think it could mean some pretty big things in either direction for any of these brands. Now, Parmigiani Fleurier itself, the watch brand, a high-end, in technically independent watch manufacturer brand, they're also rumored and reported to be up for sale. And I think it is probably about time for them because I've been rooting for them for 10 years, 15 years maybe at this point. I've been rooting for them. They make great watches. The Parmigiana, Parmigiani Fleurier Calpa was one of my earliest watches from them. It wasn't a hot seller. It had a unique, different style that not everyone liked. It was a little avant-garde, a little bit with these kind of different lug shapes. It wasn't for everyone. There'll be a picture here. I loved it though, and I think it was every bit of quality as you'd find from Audemars Piguet, for example. But the reality is, over time, it took them far too long, and they offered far too little to keep up with where collectors were. It took them 15 years to meet collectors where they were, and that was steel sports watches, right? Parmigiani Fleurier held on to the precious metal dress watches forever as it slowly died a painful death. And if we look at what I think is probably the best comparison here, which is the Parmigiani Fleurier Tonda PF 36 compared to the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak 37. We're going to compare this here because the Royal Oak 37 is what uses the Vauche movement. I think it's fair. Let's try to compare apples to apples here as close as possible. The Tonda PF from Parmigiani has a retail of about $24,000, whereas the AP Royal Oak has a retail of about $26,500. So we're looking at kind of the same price point. Let's try to call it the same here. And something to look at here is the Tonda PF you could get for $10,000 under retail online anywhere right now. Go to Chrono24. They're out there. Whereas the AP Royal Oak 37, you're going to pay at least $10,000 over the retail. 
So we're looking at quite a big difference here and the market has decided that pretty much the branding and the company means way more than the quality. And I think that's what Parmigiani is realizing that they've kind of built out this strategy for so long and maybe it's just not working anymore in a down market. In a market where even Audemars Piguet and some of the other brands are feeling a bit of a pullback and some others feeling even more, Parmigiani Fleurier, I would be shocked if anyone was buying one of these at retail price right now, not only because if they could buy at retail the Royal Oak, why wouldn't they? It's worth more. Uh, I always recommend buying what you love, but generally that is on average how people are thinking out there, not me, but it's a thing. Why would they do it? It wouldn't make a lot of sense. They lose immediately $10,000 walking out the door, but they gain it for the Royal Oak. And so when you see something like that, I think the proof is in the pudding with this one. They didn't really do enough with the branding and because of it, or considering that, they didn't lower the price enough. And I think for collectors going forward, if this all is true and the company is for sale and someone's going to buy it, a lot of times when this happens, especially if it's bought by private equity, you saw it with Breitling, they clear house, they dump the old inventory. And I think we could be seeing 12 months from now, maybe, once again, I'm speculating, but I think maybe we could be seeing some of these really nice, high quality, fine Parmigiani Fleurier watches hitting the market once again uh, into the gray market for pennies on the dollar, giving collectors a really great opportunity to get into a high-end independent watch that has potential to kind of reclaim some of its branding in the future, but at least give you a really high quality watch. And when I bought my, per my first Parmigiani, that's kind of where the brand was, and I saw so much value in it. So I'm actually pretty excited for collectors. I, I want to see the collectors like myself, like you, get a win on this one. Uh, I really have no stake in the game when it comes to the retail prices of these watches and the demand for them. It is what it is. But I think it'll be very cool. And I think we'll see once again, the next 12, 18 months, collectors being able to get some great deals on watches, perhaps watches they've been priced out on in the past. But guys, let me know, what do you think about this? Do you think it really is uh, you know, that important that maybe you know, there's some issues going forward with potentially the supply of movements to Richard Mille for some of their watches, as well as the Audemars Piguet? Both really big companies, I think they'll recover, but I would, I would love if it does happen, but I'd love to see it and hear what you think in the comments below. And also, please do not forget to chime in uh, about any other topics you'd like to see or hear, especially in other formats or places. Uh, including business, entrepreneurship, some of the investing in startups and working with startups that I uh, that I do. I'd love to share it with you if interested. Uh, and guys, have a great week this week, and we'll see you next time. You've been chatting with John P.